Hey guys, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Three Cups of Tea by Greg Mortensen and David Oliver Rellin. Um, this is a non-fiction book um, about Greg Mortensen's uh, trip into Pakistan and how he started building schools in Pakistan and Afghanistan. Um, I went through and read this entire book and was like, oh my gosh, this book is amazing and it's totally everything I believe in. Um, we should totally, like, education is going to be the way to bring world peace and everything. And then when I was done, I found out there's actually, he lied about some of the stuff that happened in here. Um, some of it's minor things like chronology and, like, the first school he claims he built wasn't actually the first school he was talking about building places. Um... And he's not very good at accounting for all the money that the charity raises. I'm like, well, some of that could just be not having a head for money and being in, like, Pakistan. And um, but then he lied about getting kidnapped by the Taliban. And I really can't, like, brush that one off. Like, that, there's no excuse for lying about that. Um, so now I'm like, I don't know what I feel about this honestly. Um, I'll put a link to the Goodreads page where I found all the links to the controversy. Um, they're from reputable newspapers like the New York Times and 60 Seconds did a series on him, uh, Washington Post. So um, people who did their research, um, basically. So I'll put that that page down there. You can go find all the links. You can also just Google three cups of tea and like the top three, four out of the top five videos are about the controversy around this book. Um, why? So according to the book, whether or not this is actually what happens, because now I'm not even not even sure that's how it really happened. Um, so Greg was a mountaineer. He was raised by missionaries in uh, Tanzania, I think, the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, so he grew up in Africa. And he talks about his childhood in Africa for a little bit and how important like uh, education was to his family and trying to educate the people in Africa um, and how he really saw this need for that. And it also talks about his love of mountain climbing, like living at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro. He's always like, I want to scale that one day. And so he gets this passion for becoming a climber. And then in his 20s or 30s, I think it's his 20s, um, he decides to try to climb K2, uh, which is an incredibly dangerous mountain to try to climb. Um, it's in Pakistan along the Pakistan, Chinese, Afghanistan borders. K2 is right here, right on the border of China and Pakistan. Um, so he fails this attempt. One of his, one of the other members of his climbing party gets injured, and so he can't continue to the top. He doesn't have the strength, um, and he comes back down the mountain exhausted. Uh, near death, lost, and he stumbles into this village of Corfe, and he sees this village and how poor it is and finds out that they don't even have a proper school. Like, the kids study outside in all kinds of weather, trying to get an education, and they don't even have their own teacher. They have to share it with a neighbor, neighboring village. Like, three days a week they have the teacher. The other village has the teacher the other three days a week, um, seventh day being, like, a Sabbath. So he feels really bad for him, and he makes this promise he's going to come back and he's going to build the school. And so it talks about his journey to bring schools and education to the Middle East, and especially these really poor villages in the northernmost part of Pakistan, where they're often forgotten by the government. And so the journey along the way is kind of riddled with all these sacrifices he made, um, how he was homeless for a while, how he um, took jobs that he could easily get up and leave from so he could spend several months a year in Pakistan, um, uh, how he did all this work to raise money and how it took 
it wasn't going well, and it wasn't until he got this backer in John Herney, who was also a mountain climber, who had been to the area, um, that he is finally able to build these schools. It also tells the story of how he met his wife and his family, and how um, he's living this life where he's spending part of the year, like three months a year in Pakistan, and then spending the other nine months at home with his family and his wife and his kids once he starts getting having kids. Um, and kind of these dual... Uh, societies and cultures and comparing the two and um, how important it is to share like cultures and stuff like how we as Americans need to learn about the Middle East and how Middle Easterners need to learn about Americans and how the best way to do that is to have um, like actually meeting somebody of a different culture so like the biggest influence he has is actually like talking to people and getting for the villagers to get to know him and if they're like, oh, Americans aren't that scary, and not all Americans are trying to kill us or um, use us, and that they can be helpful and good. So when I was first reading this book, I was completely amazed by it, and I feel like he did do good in the area, but when you go back and look at, like, how much of this book is embellished, it makes me question, like, kind of the validity of what was left also. Um, so he claims he built all these schools, and when these papers went to investigate it, they looked at 30 of the schools that he claims he built. And for half of them, maybe the building is actually there, but it's not actually being used as a school anymore. Um, because they don't have the money to keep supplying teachers or supplies or maintenance on the buildings. Um, so out of 30 schools, maybe 15 of them are still up and running and working. So I don't, I don't know. The fact that he lied about so much of it makes me question the rest of it. So the main thing they're trying to push in this book is the importance of education. Um, how without it they don't have schooling. Um, and what a difference just getting a fifth grade education can make in a society like this. And what a big deal educating women is. And how actual, like the Quran and actual Islamic teachings that follow the Quran say that you should educate all your children, including the women. And he also talks about the Taliban and how they are educating the men. But while they're like coming into these areas that are really poor, they'll set up a school and it's just like it's brainwashing. Like we're going to teach the boys, but we're also going to teach them how to be soldiers. And we're going to teach them how to like treat women and how women should be inferior. And we're not going to educate the women. And these men, we're going to pay them. They're going to join our army. And when they come back, we want them to have lots of wives. And then they'll produce lots of kids. And how that's the Taliban's, like, main mode of recruitment. And how devastating that can be. And how the only real way to, edu to um, combat that is to go in there and give them a different form of education. Um, and how it's important to keep it... Like, not westernize our education, but keep it within that culture and still have it, still, like, let them practice Islam. <clears throat> and how, at its heart, Islam is a uh, religion of peace. So this book, while being credited to both Greg Martinson and David Oliver Rellin, was clearly written by David Oliver Rellin. It's written in third person. He constantly talks about... Dr. Greg, Greg Mortensen says, um, so the writing style is kind of weird in that, and it becomes, he comes off as his, like, superhero, idol, oh my goodness, this magnificent man, which even not knowing about the controversy was getting super annoying by the end of the book. Um, so I was not a fan of the way it was written, um, I listened to the audiobook for most of this, and that was a lot easier to take it. It's written in a conversational tone, um, so it was a lot more bearable as an audiobook than trying to read it on the page. Um, and part of that's also there are so many uh, Middle Eastern Islamic words I didn't know, Arabic. I don't know. Like I said, I don't really know what to feel about this book anymore. Um, on one hand, it totally encapsulates what I believe in in a way about the education and the importance of educating women and what a difference that can make 
um, and how we should get to know other cultures. But on the other hand, so much is lied about that that taints the message. Um, I don't know if you guys want to read it. It's an, an inspiring look, at least the first time I finished it. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Read it if you want to. It's not horrible. Um, it was enjoyable the first time, but it's not. It's definitely not a book that I'm in love with anymore. I was in love with it for like a second after I finished it. And then I read the Goodreads stuff and not so much. Then I found out the controversy and not, not so much. So, yeah. There is the mixed bags. That is Three Cups of Tea by Greg Mortensen and Oliver David Rellin. Um, I love you guys. Peace out. Keep reading. Even if this isn't your book, totally, totally. There are plenty of other books. Not, they're not all this bad. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Bye.